Welcome to Murder Hobo Between the Rolls. Murder Hobo Between the Rolls. That's what you're watching. We're not going to get sued at all for that, huh? Oh. Plus <laughs> six seconds. I'm pretty sure that's public domain, guys. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Music. Well, music. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. That's right. So uh, I, I think I'm supposed to be hosting the first part of it, which means I have to do the list of all of our sponsors. Is that right? Someone tell me if I have to do that right. Go yeah, you, you, do. you yeah. can do the sponsors first. You can talk about following us on Twitch. Following ah, us on yes. Twitter, taking a look at our archive or on both Twitch and or Kyle YouTube. Do it. You could also talk about our <laughs> uh, RPG gifts. I'm reading from my list right here. <laughs> <laughs> you could try the store, tiny URL. It's listed somewhere on the screen here i don't know my own positioning uh uh-huh. most importantly if you want to play in the one shot scott you gotta uh-huh. mention that the one gotta, shots yeah if you gotta talk to us on <laughs> M- Hobo Inc. at twitter or at gmail if they want to play make sure you mention that. <laughs> Holy uh, crap. and then you say something witty about the sponsors uh, I, I I could and uh, and the sponsors um i could say something witty about the sponsors oddfishgames.com Adventure Sense uh, and the Shine System, or I could also ask you to tell us what is a one shot because that seems like that could have maybe multiple meetings. Really? <laughs> if you if what, you want to participate what a in one, one shot, shot is a one, one shot, shot yeah. is a, a one it's and done. It's kind of like a man. fish bowl thing, you know, uh-huh. fish bowl party. What? Exactly yeah. like that. Exactly. You just bring like your own party. miniature, uh-huh. put your keys on it, throw it in right? the fish bowl. Yeah. <laughs> one and done okay i'm sorry that carol sounds... you might be a bit young for that fishbowl parties are where you throw your keys into a fishbowl and then someone pulls out a random key so that's <laughs> who you take home oh boy yeah no i i'm too old hey for... what what happens no, no, no. is up to you so <laughs> exactly I mean, you play D and D, or you that's can. right. You, you could, you could just. All you have to do is you just have to take them home. You don't have. That's it. That's just you have to. You can take them home and have them make you pizza. Yes. There you go. <laughs> or something else. <coughs> Raviolis. Make a different kind of pie. Did you forget pirate yeah. dog dice? By the way, did you forget pirate dog? Pirate dog dice. Pirate pirate diggity do. What? Pirate diggity do. Also, or when you're you're rolling like shit, pirate dog dice. Pirate dog dice. That's right. When you when you're rolling terrible, you have to use pirate dog dice. And then said, "Yeah, he's got the adventure sense." When your game, which one did I have? I don't know. Is that suit? Is that sewer, isn't it? That's that 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 sewers. <laughs> My wife looked at me and I said, "Hey, honey, I got this. It's time for us to smell." And she's like, "I'm not smelling with that. You, you don't open that in this house." <laughs> she's smart. She's smart. <laughs> The rest of their, their scents are, are great, but that one, uh, yeah. I've been warned not to, to, unless you really want your place <laughs> to smell Having been warned like not to sword. smell it, I opened it the first thing <laughs> and took a deep whiff. Uh, I haven't smelled anything yet. <laughs> so, so it's like the big red button that says do not push. Because right. he's going to push it. And the other thing I yeah. believe Frank wanted you to mention was the fact that we now have a podcast. It's the hell of a word. He did not put the podcast on my list here. No. No, And he's downloaded, he's uploaded a whole bunch of episodes. Let me see if I actually can find it. But does he open, uh, upload the new ones or does he just start with the old ones? He started with the old ones. He started with all the old Uh, ones. That's ridiculous. Got to do with the new ones. That way you get the best audio quality and then you get them hooked and then they're forced to listen to all the crappy ones. It is. Okay, so I've got it here. It's tinyurl.com uh, slash Murder Hobo Inc. List. Audio. Murder Hobo. That's right. We have a. We have an we, audio pie. So you don't a, have to look audio. at these right. faces. You can just listen. Or, you know, you can take us with us in your car or wherever where you can't really watch. That's the well, best that's part good about time. hosting this show is that everyone speaks randomly about random things. <laughs> right? and no one actually ever hosts the show. Well, it's it's important to note that uh, that uh, if you are doing that, uh, for instance, in in your car with your kids on the way to school, such that this show happens to be for mature audiences only. 
Because someone needs to be mature because it ain't so us. Someone needs to be mature <laughs> in order to listen. Just someone. After that, you can have kids, something, you know, doing. Their kids, just, you know, in some cases, you know, the kids may be more mature than the adults. Oh, I would uh, say in most of the cases. Yeah. Probably uh, greater than 50 said, to 60 percent. Especially in our cases. Yes. I have a in very important case, message to one of our fans. Go oh, yeah? fuck yourself, Heidi. All right. What? <laughs> well, that's it. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's well deserved. Trust me. I didn't Why? see what she said, but Frank said she said something. Wait. Ah. What? She, so she deserves it. I don't know. I didn't see it. <laughs> but I believe Frank when he tells me. Oh, that. I think she did say something, but I don't think it was anything bad. Oh. Okay. Oh, well, then. Then, then, then I don't I apologize, Heidi. You still deserve it for some reason. I remember she answered to post it on one you of You ruined my one shot that one time, Heidi. So, uh, <laughs> fuck you. So, uh, we will be discussing, um, welcome to, <coughs> to, um, welcome to Between the Roles. It's Tuesday night. Uh, this is our semi-normal cast of, uh, creatures and cretins. And I'm trying to think of other names Normal-ha. to start with C, cretins. but, but, but I don't. Cretins? Cretins? Um, yeah. Creatures, creatures, um, um, I'm at a loss. Fine, that's um, and cunts. I wasn't gonna say it. What? What? I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> oh, okay. That was I'm the glad one that we was were on the same my, page. Yeah, we, we were. We were. <laughs> I was just. I, I, I just. You know, I, I'm kind of in an open area inside my house. You know, and there are there are there are small children, so I, I am self censoring a little bit. Although I was, man, I was right there with you. I was right there. Was <laughs> the exact same thing. Wow. It's just a little bit of self-censoring. That's all. So, sure. So <laughs> let's uh, introduce the creatures, the Cretans, and the... the... <laughs> and the... Uh, you see in here. that order, so... No, no. We're going to go in reverse order. Um, okay. Carol, if you could please... <laughs> you... please... Wait, does that make me... <laughs> <laughs> Lovely! You Still on the same uh, way. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's we're I'm already off the rails. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. Shouldn't be going uh, that direction um, at all. Um, I'm not sure right what now. to say right now. Jeez, I didn't. I thought you guys thought better of me than that. Oh, Continue. we do. We do. It's cats. I love that. that that's that's what we should be going. It's cats. Let's, let's cats. cats. Yeah, yeah, cats, yeah. yeah. Cats, cats, baby. Like, cats. like, like cats. Oh, I was oh, gonna cats say cats, like tabaxi, right? You know, because tabaxi. cats. Our cast of characters for this evening. <laughs> Carol, she was Carol, okay, okay, okay. So hi everyone. My name is Carol. I am a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and I'm a commission mini painter. Uh, and I was playing Taryn in the campaign, which is now over. Who is Misser? Did you die? No, but she um <clears throat> she's Seems horribly missing, maimed. <laughs> she's missing a leg now, her left leg. Okay. Yeah. That's no fun. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. But the sad thing is, well, uh, there may be one shots coming down the road that may have our campaign. Maybe a one legged character. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, well, that's I'm hoping maybe Kyle will, will actually run a one shot where we go to that dungeon that you made under the library that you mentioned, taking her to get the uh, battle leg back? wheelchair. No, to get a battle wheelchair. Ah, to get a battle. Oh, you know, yeah, that, cool. that yeah, is a yeah. good idea. I should write that down that, before that, I forget that, about that, it. I was gonna cool. bring it up in green room, but I'm like, screw it. I'll do it now since we're talking about it. Or you can just have, child. or you can have a goblin build you an explosive press. No, oh, no, uh, I know just the goblin clan to do it. Actually, I, this is thought I could do the. I believe didn't Tasha's Cauldron of Everything have prosthetic legs and mm-hmm. limbs in there? Yeah, mm-hmm. I believe so that's it did. idea yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. David, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and um, <laughs> um, what you're what you're doing? Okay. Nowadays, we, we, nowadays. we, we uh, yeah yeah nowadays. Nowadays, I've been playing a lot on Murder Hobo, <laughs> especially for the month of December, which I am not complaining. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm David. <coughs> I'm usually on our uh, Thursday show, Cacophony. I play Zadar, the arcane trickster. Uh, I'll volunteer for any of the one shots. So whenever they have room, I'll get cast for that. <laughs> David, David, when you're going to run a one shot? 
I got to talk to the missus about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I've I've been a regular here on BTR for a while. So yeah, uh, other than that, I'm just an an avid D and D player. Uh, I guess you would say. <laughs> I don't know Dungeons and Dragons theorist. I like to do a lot of theory crafting. Uh, That's fair. I write some, but yeah, never anything substantial. So it's 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 uh, well, it's uh, it's always always uh, always good to see you again, David. I've I've been it's gone for the past you. couple of weeks, so it's always good to see you, um, Kyle. You're obviously in a pub. Um, the people behind <laughs> you haven't moved at all, which is really really strange. Um, like, I may have cast an evil spell, but I cannot <coughs> say for certain. All right, fair enough. All right, why don't we tell you a little bit about yourself and how you were able to cast that evil spell and project yourself into an um, an old timey tavern? Very cool. With you the know, green, it's actually up. a hipster tavern. Actually, oh yeah, they have craft fe- beers. That's yeah. true. Craft, That's beers, craft beers, craft furniture. And... But it's a I mean that hand, handrail. Hand I don't know if you can actually see that handrail. <laughs> yeah, hand carved by the monks of Tunisia. Yeah, reclaimed lumber Ooh. too. Well, yeah. actually, well, how else we, do you do it? Obviously, we can see it, but oh, I don't yeah. think I. I think it's probably cut off on the uh, on the Twitch stream. Yeah, but we you can just get see it. This section right here. Yeah, Those lovely it shoulders. Take pictures. Broad muscles. It looks great. The worried <laughs> frow of incredible thinking and thoughts behind this head hi oh, everybody sure. i'm kyle uh, <laughs> uh i i'm was second dm i think i'm at third at this point because of scott uh uh having hosted your last uh two e D D. i think that put you over the top last year and made you uh number two dm of murder hobo inc so i'm number three dm uh damn it <laughs> Uh, uh, and uh, no, that's about it. I was that's in the campaign, it. I'm no longer in the campaign. I know, it's I'm so sad. Here every Tuesday, <laughs> you are here every Tuesday. That is correct. And, you are here uh, every Tuesday. I give people <laughs> terrible advice, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> great, great ideas, terrible advice. It's one of the strangest combinations I've really ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever come in. I mean, just great just... ideas and terrible advice. It's like you have these brainstorms of just just fountains of genius thought and then no idea what to do with it it's it's really it's like you know look there's a bridge that's a fantastic thing let's go run in the opposite direction you know like you're a walking i wouldn't say that i'd say let's run alongside the bridge so we can look at the bridge as we go over this ravine it's like i i think you must write the majority of the horror movie plots that are out there right there's an old you gotta go building. in the basement guys you gotta it's, go in the basement gotta right go in the basement. that's you know you're the first to realize we may be in real danger here there may be a serial killer out to kill us Let's don't quick. follow the, in red the basement balloon. or in the shed in the backyard <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's right there's a red balloon let's follow it <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. okay and um um i'm scott um i used to be a lot more rigged around here um, I now um, DM whenever I can. I don't get to play as much as I used to, uh, but I do try to show up on uh, on on BTR whenever I can, so I can pontificate and um, um, about uh, different things. And I love the sound of my own voice. As I've said. <laughs> that is true. That's I, why he's hosting the first section of it. He's got uh, a great voice too. All right. Yeah, I guess we should actually move on now that we're already. No, we, we could just do this, you know, just to sit and kind oh, of. Oh, do we just want to know, shoot the ship for an hour? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, oh, yeah. We Frank's, that. That. Frank's not going <laughs> to. Frank's, Frank's not, not here. Care. No one can hear. Frank no, I, anyway. actually, actually, we can't because I really like the topic that uh, that uh, Kyle came up with. I think it's. Um, I didn't come up very... with this. This was David. Thank oh, you. you. Oh my go. God! I wasn't I going thought, to give you any credit until we got I on screen. Thought, wow! I, he and said, here's the he's... other surprise: David is hosting the second part, not me. Oh, I said Kyle the second half his yeah. concept. Yeah, it wasn't his concept. Email. Oh, Frank! <laughs> Frank! Oh my hey. God! We're two bald Listen, guys, it, man. two bald white guys. Yeah, uh, with we both beards, wear glasses. Yeah. Time to turn know? on Twitch and see what David, he said. It was a great idea. 
<laughs> at the time of season, new year, new character. But uh, but in following what we try to do to give everyone a, an appropriate wrap up for the uh, for the week's um, murder hobo week activities, why don't we start off with uh, a a description or at least a little bit of a talk about uh, episode one hundred and six, Dark Streets. Uh, David, can you walk us a little bit through? Uh, through walk you through the dark streets. <laughs> walk me through the dark streets. Well, dark streets streets is kind of a continuation from our Christmas Eve show. Uh, it, it occurred on New Year's Eve. Uh, it occurred on a Danish holiday, the night of bl- breaking plates. <laughs> so. It turned. Out, I forgot. I forgot the actual term Frank had for it, but uh, it was pretty funny. So basically, two of the characters from the the Christmas show, uh, you know, <laughs> Carrie's character and mine, uh, Billy the Piper. Uh, we enter <laughs> Cathaway, and within that night of Cathaway, we can't. It, it's it's like Mardi Gras and New Year's all wrapped up in one. <laughs> we even asked it it's just like okay are there any places here with balconies on them or anything like that when we were looking for a room for the night couldn't find any room and all that so we just said screw it we're staying up all night or at least until we find something so we get turned away from every everywhere and then we get a rude awakening when we find out what holiday it is because plates are just being thrown at us from all over the place we can't walk down the street. I got hit. I think uh, Dane, uh, you know, <laughs> Carrie's character, got hit. I mean, it was just, it was awful. So, uh, yeah, our intrepid duo makes their way into a well-known oh, no. Cathaway place called Salty's. Uh, yeah, so where we tried to stoke up a little revelry, revelry with uh, a couple of berserkers. Uh, Billy rolled a one. And it kind of ended up in a unfortunate uh, axe throwing accident. I won't go into any more details. It was pretty tragic. It came. I will tell you how it happened. Though I was pretty confident because my character had some heels. So if I, you know, if the axe throwing went or went awry, I thought I could fix it. But since I rolled a one. Yeah, there's just some things you can't fix. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's, there's certain things you can't fix. Un- unfortunately, can't. Billy's not going to be able to show his faith, face in Cathaway again because Billy will have warrants. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's uh, that's 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 an unfortunate. Uh, uh, that's an unfortunate uh, but but unfortunate to sum case. sum it up, it ended up with we're we're meeting. Uh, Dwayne the Brick Johnson, <laughs> the, the celebrity of Cathaway, partying with him, going on a booze cruise, <laughs> ending up at a underground cl- uh, crab fighting club, <laughs> and then rounding up the night with fighting the Furies from the Warriors. You know, Warriors wow. come out and play. Yeah. So that's how our night ended. So. It was a great episode. We got a lot done. And Kyle, we finished early. We finished like 10 minutes early. Wow. That makes all up of that. For all of that. Oh, yeah. Wow. I've never been able to do that. I've never been able to finish early. So that was our episode. <laughs> <Dark Streets. laughs> oh, my God. Let's uh, let's just say it's funny. It's tragic. It's got that was well. so funny because it's not true. <laughs> oh my okay. god so sorry sorry david no that's it so <laughs> that's how i said check out our show it's on uh, it's it's in the archives i mean it's funny it's a funny funny watch that's so. good that's good <laughs> kyle and why don't you talk to us about uh our episode at skidmark is that really is is that what is that the name skidmark, skidmark. Yep. to be fair frank wrote it so Skip mark. It has that just... nuance <laughs> that, that Frank applies to everything. Uh, what happened? What was it? That was David, myself, Hannah, Ernie, and um, who was the fourth? I just said it. Ernie? Ernie? Myself? You? Yeah. Hannah? Oh, Hannah. 
That's oh yeah. <laughs> no, it's weird. Her name is actually also on this board. Yeah. It's a, How could man. you forget <laughs> Hannah, man? Hannah's the coolest. <laughs> well, uh, no, uh, Hannah. So everyone there uh, 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 with Hannah's third time getting her set of dice eventually from Pirate Dog Dice so that she can also roll shit like the rest of us because she was a boss last time. Um, mm-hmm. Gosh, what did we do? We had to stop River Pirates. Uh, and that's what the note says, River that, Pirates. Oh, oh, good. oh, thank goodness, because I did not oh, remember yeah. that until I read that. Uh <laughs> Wow. Uh, essentially, we had to stop an inbred family from uh, blocking up all the travel from up or down river um, with uh, uh, your evil cleric leading the way. You set fire and purged uh, terrible things. And there were goats and ballistas. And mm-hmm. I honestly haven't given it much thought since. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> Wow! Uh, this is why I host this section generally, but <laughs> I, I, I'm just wondering how goats tie in with ballistas. I mean, you, I mean, well, were the goats firing the ballistas were the, the goats technically were firing yeah. the ballistas. Yeah, <laughs> technically, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So it's not like they were ammunition because I've yeah. seen goats being launched. See, that would have been that was as, the way it worked in my brain. Well, yeah. let's just say well, you a guys goat, are goat clearly appendage. horrible people. <laughs> Well, launching geez. goats they're cute and adorable some of them faint um mm-hmm. yeah but it was essentially murdering a family we uh <laughs> uh murdered wow. some other families mm-hmm. or you saved may... them so, i honestly didn't really care at the time so you know i i sort of monitor the twitch you know, the, the chat and uh you're making frank you're, you're really giving frank that boost of self-esteem you know Oh, am I? Oh, that's it was because... a memorable show. It really Rose, was. Wow, thanks. I feel... But you know what? See, here's what you guys don't know, and I do because I can see it there. Uh, and DJ, DJ, who's watching? Holy crap. Um, uh, DJ, if you're there, tell Heidi she can go for herself. <laughs> so apparently, uh, Frank loves you too because he has switched David's and Kyle's names on the, uh, on the stream. There you go. So, so you know, it's so perfect. That nice. You don't That's because awesome. So, so there you go. DJ, DJ just said, "Wait, what?" Heidi knows what she does. <laughs> I know what Heidi does. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Um, well, so the uh, the azaniness, um, oh, what, the what, 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 was that just about every single enemy there uh, got punched out by Hannah. Mm-hmm. You know, the druid with the mighty mystical powers just yeah. punched just every punching enemy. Punching everyone out. And, huh? and, the right rook- out. and the rookie pulled <laughs> off the ultimate murder hobo. And pulled off the ultimate murder hobo, but we're not going to mention that because... <laughs> You'll have you to just watch gotta watch it. To the episode. Gotta watch it. Okay. Well, yeah. there, there you go. That'll. that'll you know what? She was just it. innocently sitting in her little square there while she had everyone else in her apartment putting things away for her, and uh, pulled that right out of her hat. Yeah, she wasn't coached at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah no. <laughs> oh man. It's like it was. She was just a natural, right? Just, mm-hmm. just born to it. Yeah. All right. Oh, Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's hey, uh, good. Carol, why don't you pay attention to the show instead of oh, replying um, on Twitch? No, she's I, having way too I, much fun. Hey, it is, is about too much fun. No, well, D- I, I'm answering DJ's now, question. Now, Carol, why do you say fuck Heidi? That's rude. I don't. What <laughs> beef do you have with Heidi? She's a <laughs> wonderful <laughs> person. She is. I yeah, didn't. What's you wrong did. with you? I'm answering you his question. So, so what uh, happened on Sunday? I yeah. So, what happened on Sunday with uh, with the journey of what the uh, uh, the fartard is? Is that what it is? <laughs> fartard. I don't. I, don't Far- look at me. I didn't. I, I took a. I took Batar. a vacation. Batar. Man. Batar. 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 Fartard sounds a lot better. Yeah, it does. Better. I mean, it was the Batar? it was the Franks. <laughs> All you need to know, folks, it was the Franks, the, which is the tri generational uh, show that's on on Sunday. Uh, right early evenings and uh it's hysterical oh my god he said um, frank said home of the turtles 
Yes, they had to home escape the, 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 the home yeah. of the turtles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Watch well, the why, show. Why do turtles hyphenate their cities? Lord knows. <laughs> they thing. speak very slowly. I'm being but, trolled. I'm trolled. But, uh, <laughs> There's actually more to the yeah, city they, name. We just we, we just, just cut them off have right the there. To hear it. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> if you get a chance, check out the, the, the show. There may be some fan art coming up soon. So be on the lookout on Twitter or our Discord channel for that. Okay. So so why doesn't someone tell us about what happened on the journey to Fatar? I think that's about what you're gonna get. <laughs> that's about what you're gonna get, you're gonna get. Scott. yeah okay. because i okay. mean yeah. well i know what happened here the party managed to fake their way out of a battle and they ended up meeting some halflings and can you elaborate probably not no, i would <laughs> but you should watch <laughs> the show. i don't want to spoil it too much for you guys oh man it's a fun show. I mean, you That's should watch right. it. They got it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now, what, what what is the time that that one plays? Is that a Sunday night? It, it's Sunday, uh, afternoon. usually afternoon, like four four thirty or yeah, somewhere around yeah. that. Sunday, yeah. it's like Eastern time. Eastern time. So, time. so four thirty Eastern time, yeah. tri generational show, and I've heard great reviews about it. Um, I was just, I was probably. Uh, I was probably skinning a deer at that time. So. Frank, <laughs> Frank, Frank says 4.15-ish. 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 Uh, In the morning. He just a has little... to have the last word, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, a Welsh standard. A little thing. little background <laughs> is this is one of Frank's original shows that, that all this started from. So, yeah, they're, they're a great uh, bunch of guys <laughs> that used to be on Geek Spiel. So if anybody followed that show, uh, no yeah, one you can them, find them though, and so that's where they. Ended oh up come here. on, they have fans. I know one of them personally. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. All right, all right. So th- those are the episodes that we play. And what's on tap for uh, this week? We have uh, we have three. We normally do this at the end, but I'm having so much fun talking about this. I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to let the reins over right now. We have uh, three. We have three games uh, scheduled to be on. One on Thursday, one on Saturday, mm-hmm. one on Sunday again. Yep. Is that correct? Right. Yep. So yep. pretty sure there's a there's well, uh, there's you and Cacophony on Thursday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cacophony on Thursday, right? At eight I'm o'clock. Of that one. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. And, 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 no, no, eight o'clock uh, Eastern. Eastern. Sorry, sorry. Right. sorry. And we're doing a we're doing a uh, we're doing a one shot on. Uh, on a Saturday, Saturday right? at okay. Beholder Eastern. Swamp, which is Beholder still Swamp. open. Which yeah, so if you guys open. want to join in on that one, mm-hmm. again, M Hobo Inc. on Twitter or Gmail. Oh yeah, standing. And then of and course then the game that tri generation. The, the aforementioned tri generation at either four fifteen ish to four thirty sort of um, Eastern time Asian frame standard Eastern standard time. Standard time. Yes, that's Very the well. same as Kenya. In case you were wondering, yeah, nice. I, I was. <laughs> um, so w- our topic for today uh, that Kyle slash David uh, came up with uh, was to talk about. I will say David came up with it, but uh, I have brought you three here because each of you are it's outstanding in your field of character creation. We have Scott who made Eric called Justice Man, mm-hmm. the greatest paladin to ever. Grace us with his presence oh. in, in Hobo and Hobo. And his and list. And have sighed multiple and his times. List. And, his, and his list. Do not and forget the list. list. Believe it or list. not, Eric called Justice Man was the character that drew me into Murder Hobo to listen to the first episode. <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> right. Give him a bigger head now. Yeah, yeah I know. All right. Well, now yeah, that yeah, Scott the Amazing has been introduced, then we have David, of course, who is our. Uh, uh, our major character creator. I was about to say, uh, I'm artist. the one with the compulsion. That is what he does. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm the characters. Right. Nonstop. Just, just oh my God. Creating. I've got to 
I've got a baby. D and D Beyond is my bane, man. Oh my because God. I cannot get away from it. <laughs> You're I the guy. Spent a ton of money to. Uh, He's the guy in the to end. Buy all the subclasses. <laughs> He's the guy. D&D what D&D if this paladin D&D. hit a horse? Yes. Yes, you are That's... that guy. You are no, that guy. No, I am guy. not the voice actor, folks. No, 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 but no, no, I am no. that guy. He's that guy. That's making the, like the nine million characters instead of doing something productive. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Like writing scenarios for this show. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that would be no, not letting That's it why go. nothing gets done. It's just like, oh, we got a one shot this weekend. There we go. Boom. Laptop open. I'm on it. You're so. on it. Yeah. Nine <laughs> derivations of 13 different classes. Oh, I can't tell all... you. The yeah. I mean, yeah. So, my main on, campaign, and then, like of course, we have Carol, of who uh, created the character Taryn. Yeah. We have no idea why she's on this show. <laughs> she was available and, in fact, wrote a five-page email. No. Taryn, Taryn is a well-rounded so character. Sure Tar- Taryn Thank is you. a very well-rounded character. Um, Not without her legs. <laughs> Hey, we'll find out. You know what? I mean, sitting in her chair from now on. She's she not even going to. She it. won't have a chair until she goes to that dungeon. Oh, oh but she, she's her. You've got to take her to the lot. You got to. You got to. We was going to take her somewhere to have and build her something. Right now, she's on crutches and is what half speed. And I have to look up the rules for that. <laughs> there nice. are rules, apparently. Mm. Well, so so that that gives us as to what our topic actually is, which is new character creations. It's a new yes. year, um, new you, and a new you, <coughs> and a new character. So, um, why don't we turn things over to the topic generator, um, David Kyle, uh, David? Kyle David? <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> well, at least now the names are in the correct locations. So hey, at least it is. <laughs> and my initials match, so there we go. <laughs> so I've so got the monogram. I'll turn that over to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, we were trying to come up with uh, ideas for tonight's show for the topic. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah we were drinking we a lot while ideas. we did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were trying to come up with ideas, and uh, one of the things that I suggested was, well, we're starting a new year. Uh, we're gonna start a new campaign, so let's just make it. You know. Uh, about creating new characters so henceforth the idea of new year new you uh came about um yeah with character creation i mean we'll start off with uh you know uh basically (coughs) things that you think about when you're creating a character i mean when you're trying to create a persona for for whether it be a one shot a campaign or whatever I mean, it helps to really put some thought into it if you can. I mean, some people just like go to a fast character real quick. Boom, there we go. I got it. Here we go. I'm ready to play. That's a great way to do things. But I mean, yeah. Just remember if you're gonna... when you do that, if you play a character with spells, you also have to pick those out. Yeah, you got to pick those out too. So, I mean, yes, past character will pick some out for you, but yeah. That's why I like D&D. I like to do it on D&D Beyond, mm-hmm. and it makes it go really fast. Granted, D&D. Stop saying their name. I They're know they great. should, That's, man. You know who is? That's Don it. Julio. <laughs> Don Julio does not, but they should, and so should D&D Beyond, because... I but mean, you know man, what? I pimp them out. We have the better sponsors. Oh, oh. Offish oh. Games is awesome. <laughs> good. Offish Games with their how to RPG with your cat system too. I mean, come on, yeah, That's so awesome. <laughs> oh, I think we just killed Kyle. I think we just killed Kyle. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, Kyle. <laughs> you okay, man? Are you? Accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just dosed himself really bad with putrid sewer. Oh my by, god! By, <laughs> by the way, the amazing thing on Twitch chat right now, there I believe DJ is actually creating character concepts. Oh my god, Kyle! Just for this, is he okay? I hope he is. <laughs> oh my god oh man that I, that's just painful when you get a sniff oh. of something that you weren't hoping to get a sniff of <laughs> oh that's my god so fun. 
<laughs> our producer just came in. You can feel that at the back of your throat, right? It just doesn't Oh my leave. God. All right. Well. All right. So I'm while Kyle is, is trying to tear that. <laughs> no, it's we sure were laughing at this. She really said Oh, Kyle, I am so sorry, man. Oh, my God. I can't. <laughs> Don't do it. Adventure sense. They pack a punch. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> You're too <different. laughs> Oh, my God. I'm okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Oh. Uh, it's going to be hard to follow this, folks. But... I'm done. I think I'm okay, done. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. <laughs> uh, character creation. Start to think about who you want your character to be. One of the things to start off start start off with is race. Um, just visualize the the type of character you would like to be whether you would like to be uh an elf everybody goes elf <laughs> dwarf orc uh but now we have a plethora of, of races down with uh fifth edition and more just keep being added um so yeah you can i mean it's really easy to make a character that you can feel comfortable with for playing for a long period of time, if uh, that's what you're creating the character for, like for a major campaign or, you know, maybe a small uh, serial or something like that. So, but, um, you know, each characters designed off of mascots for serials. Yeah, there we go. I call Captain Crunch. I call. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll take, uh, yeah, I'll think it's the tricks, the rabbit. There we go. <laughs> Count Chocula. Count Chocula, yeah. Anybody yeah. else who wants the monster cereals, go for it. <laughs> but uh, seriously, um, one of the things that, that uh, people think about when they're creating character and trying to determine the race, a lot of people get hung up on uh, the racial abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, it could be like, for example, one might have um, you know, plus two dexterity, plus one wisdom, uh, you start to think about that sometimes uh, with deciding on a race of character can also lead you into a class. So for example, two dexterity, one wisdom, you know, good thing to be would probably be a monk because those are uh, two attributes that, that, you know, that benefit right. from that. Right. But um, you don't have to feel restricted by doing things like that now. Uh, with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything that came out, there there is a whole section on customizing the character to uh, to suit your needs. You can now customize your origin, uh, the the abilities that your character starts off with. Um, D and D Beyond, and I hate mentioning it again, but like I said, I'm addicted to it. Uh, in their interface now, there are, there's uh, character creation options for custom uh, character creation as far as uh, changing uh, abilities, backgrounds, and things like that. So, I mean, you can get it. The sky's the limit. And uh, that's one of the good things about 5th edition. It has made it very easy. Um, so, so, yeah, just... Um, you know, don't feel restricted. If you happen to see like, uh, you know, one in the list of races, something that fascinates you. Uh, it's just like, you know, for, for example, with Ravnica, you might have like, you, you see, you see the listing for a Luxodon and it, it is an elephantoid type race. You know, you may get ideas with, with that. One of the, like, for example, one of the things that I thought of is just like, that would be a really cool race to make a character. I started thinking about Indian mythology or uh, uh, mm. their religion, Hinduism and stuff like that. So I started uh, thinking about, you know, they, they had a, um, a wisdom modifier part of their racial so it's just like okay i came up with an idea for a monk and within the past couple of months uh tasha's came out and uh they have the ash the way of the astral monk 
So, and what that is, one of the things is the astral arms that appear that you can activate it. So I started thinking about Ganesha and things like that. So that kind of helped me develop that character with that. So, like I said, I mean, the way things run now with character cre uh, creation, don't, don't think of yourself as limited. I mean, you don't have to, you know, I'll stop right there. <laughs> Let you guys take, you, take the helm on this. Do you want us to talk? What do you want us to talk about? Like our methodology and how we come mm -hmm. up with characters? Yeah. Yeah. For example, I mean, uh, to, is it something that you've seen, uh, read, or something like that? Be like, you know, I think that'd be a good character for the game. Or do you just races and classes and say, hey, that would be an interesting combination, a gnome barbarian? There you go. Yeah. That was a good combination too. You mm -hmm. you made He's that been really in my effective. back pocket for such a long time. He was well, great. Yeah. He was well, great. Well, tell us a little bit about Dewey. How you, how how you came to create him? Uh, this was back in my much stronger min maxing days, <laughs> and I just wanted to be like, I want to be a barbarian, but I don't want to have lousy. Uh, intelligence wisdom and charisma saves i still ended up with awful <laughs> saves but but i ended up uh being saved a few times just because uh gnomes are resistant to mind altering magics um and then essentially it was waiting for the right class to kind of show up and appear um which ended up being uh the zealot barbarian um, who ended up being a uh, follower of a god who lusted after knowledge, destruction, and war, essentially. And I was like, well, we got ourselves a live barbarian on our hands. <laughs> so what do you think were the cons for, for Dewey? Like, what were some of the setbacks? I mean, like you said, you were worried about the intelligence and wisdom saves and things like that i mean did you find that was the the main <laughs> uh con to to multi-classing and min-maxing like you did or oh i did multi-class i forgot about mm -hmm. that yeah you, you did. did i yeah, did you did uh, i felt the multi-classing was a little necessary for that character because um a big thing with barbarians is they like to use the big heavy weapons and if you are a small character you you don't get cut off and you can't don't you can still use them it's mm -hmm. just less effective although if being a barbarian you become essentially a a fighter at that point because you just end up yeah. having uh, 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 regular roles um, and so to offset the fact that he was using um, uh, smaller weapons uh he ended up using simple weapons most of the time uh a, a chisel a dagger and a rock hammer just a plain old hammer to beat down his much larger foes um which is why he ended up going into dual wielding one in each hand so he would get more attacks than the regular barbarian and then uh, a dip into rogue so that he could get a sneak attack as well as the zealot barbarian getting that extra extra damage that comes from another place that not necessarily the other barbarians get. And so with all of this combination, it was like, okay, having a small barbarian isn't going to be a hindrance on this party, which is what I tried to do. And it was a cool, <sighs> yeah, this character I had in my head for a while, it was min maxed. And then nowadays I do enjoy playing max men. Mm hmm. But he was a literal uh, uh, man max, with... you know. So exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and so then the strange and odd uh, uh, character for Dewey came out, where he was a coward to start off with, and fairly docile and not really interested in raging or <laughs> or fighting or cutting off people's penises and wearing them around his neck <laughs> and skinning people. Or murdering and robbing people on the streets. It uh, happens, uh, man. It happens, <laughs> I found out the hard way. So it's 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 yeah. You you were the most outside of probably me. You were the most heroic character in that campaign. Uh, to be fair, outside of you, 
No, including you. I was the most heroic character in that campaign. Mm. <laughs> no. He was a very naive no. boy. He was a no. young gnome. Very naive. No, no what, what, what? He what was put, several times you... going to ride off into the sunset. No, what nose. puts what puts you below Terran was you murdered that entire friggin' prison cell full of people. Oh, yes, I fair, know what they did. That was a Kyle character. That was not Dewey. That was Kyle. Oh, okay. But still, that then you, that's, then it's your fault. That he's not no, that he's hey, one hey. peg below. It's what Kyle would do, not my <laughs> character. All right, I am gonna step in here. Yes. Uh Carol. Um no god. Yeah, tell us a little bit, bit about Taryn what, and what you felt her pros and cons were. Because Taryn was a character that you actually carried over from another game system. Oh, from uh it's uh Taryn has a very, 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 very long history. Uh I've been Keep she it. was Keep it breath. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is it. I'll try not to go too long. Uh, basically, you've got the longest winded speakers here on this show. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be breath. So basically, she was the first campaign character ever created back thirty years ago, uh, <laughs> and I played her. I played her in college, but yeah. Uh, long story short, you know, you know, every player kind of goes through this where. You sort of build a character around yourself. I mean, I'm not an elf, obviously, but I'm. I was very thin. What? At one point. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what would it be if I was a character? Obviously, it'd be a bard. I do play the flute. I sing. I, you know, <clears throat> I do this. I like doing acting. So, so I was like, bard. Gonna be a bard. Elf. I'm sort of built like one. I'm probably a little short, but other than that, <laughs> so I made elven bard. And um, and the, and I think though, the, the, so I made it back then, and I've carried her through several other campaigns, and and just had a ton of fun playing her. So that's why she keeps coming back. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait till we do some one shots with her. Um. <laughs> but uh, but all right. So as for the so that was like what I considered. You know, I put that I put that in and built the stats around obviously charisma and she's evolved over the years because she was a sec 2e character so she mm -hmm. could she originally could take half spells from anywhere yeah you know, so she had magic missile and and oh god a bunch of wizard spells because that's the window bard spells back in 2e right so then over time though now, the funny thing is it's come full circle where now you can pick like a couple of wizard spells as a bard so it's come full circle that she could cast magic missile again Nice. And it was probably one of her signature spells. Uh, uh, pros and let's go say pros and cons. Uh, I built her this in this go around, and well, this time went on. I, I definitely love to play characters that are not just hack and slash and fight and just kill everything dead. I like characters that think outside the box and have to be clever. So the con is, and we all know this, we've all joked that she's not a great melee fighter she's not although she did in the end there i did she actually got up in the face of that wizard uh right before the main fight and she friggin uh she 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 didn't shoot it because it had that effect mm -hmm. uh but see the thing is the reason why i went ranged is one time the one time i didn't and dj knows damn right well no knows what time it is i went and challenged a uh, nightshade I had a weapon that was a, a sun blade, which would work real well against it. And most of the party was running the other direction. And I went in and I hit it once and then it cast finger of death and Taryn has got no constitution. So there's a con right there. <laughs> so she kind of died because <clears throat> I couldn't make the save. Yeah. Uh, but so that's, I'd say that's the cons of the character, but the pros are, it just, she can talk her way out of so many different situations because I've, I put a lot in like persuasion and bluff and uh, of course perform. I want to make a really good performer. And uh, so that's, so that's, that's a bit of it. And said, as for the way I think of characters, it, it actually depends on a lot of different things. Rania came from a, a different game, like a, Rainia was a persona I had in one of those pay to play games, but I wasn't going to pay to play it. And it was a game that had a lot of politics. So basically I sat there and I role played the whole time as right. this character. And so, and I, she was a 
she was a wild child. She had no allegiances to anybody. I keep, I get smashed all the time. I wouldn't care. I <laughs> had so much fun. It, 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 the game went so far beyond, you know, what what the actual mechanics were of the video game. So cool. what we what we made it, it became a story. It was really cool. <laughs> so that's where she came from, you know. Um, but I've had other characters like I like if I hear, you know, if I get the the scenario of a one shot, um, I'll build something to that. Uh, if I'm planning a campaign with my friends at home, a lot of times I'll let them pick characters and like what class and such. And I will fill in a gap. So if we need a healer, I'll bring in a healer. You know, uh, like our Tuesday night game, the DJ was running and hopefully will be sometime when this pandemic thing's over. Uh, I built a paladin because we didn't really have any good frontline fighters. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, sometimes that's what comes, that's what comes of it. As for, and then I'll put everything, usually class is what I think about first. And then I'll, then I'll actually consider race and, and all mm -hmm. the other things, you know, that go into it. But I usually always start with the class. Okay. Uh, Scott, <clears throat> what, um, I mean, you're the one that's going to have the, the most insight into all this, I, I would think, because you started minutes. from from the beginning. So run with it, my man. T tell us uh, tell us what your thoughts on all this. So so I, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the most insights on this, to be honest with you, um, because I think character creation is such a is such an individual act. Um, and I, 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 I can say what I do whenever I'm a DM about trying to, when I do, and I DM a lot of homebrew and, and a lot of things that take bits and pieces and like, to, like this and that, and I'll restrict a lot of rules, but I try to leave character creation as open as I possibly can for the creator, <laughs> for the players to be able to, if, if, I mean, if I'm in Greyhawk and there's no such thing as a dragonborn, I'll find a way to fit dragonborn into the myths of it. I mean, I'll, I'll. I'll, I'll work that out. Now, <clears throat> one thing when I'm talking about races versus classes, I tend to actually start when I'm making a character, I tend to start with the race. That, that's where I kind of think about more than, more than, I don't think I want a magic user. I don't think I want a bard or a cleric. I think, do I want to play an elf? Or do I want to play a human? Or do I want to play, um, you know, one of the, you know, a dwarf or something like that? And that's because what I'm looking for is two things. I'm looking for their their backstory and how that informs what their what their profession is going to be. So, for instance, with Eric Hall, I wanted him to be a human, um, but I wanted him to to exhibit some type of frailty. And and in every character I play, they they all have some type of flaw, some type of so there's something wrong with them. And and I'm trying to make it a play on what their on what their, um, you know, traditional role is. I like to kind of poke a little bit of fun at that. So when I play an elf, I play an incontinent elf, one that cannot nice. control their... <laughs> one that cannot that was a good one. I watched that. <laughs> yeah, so so it's know. like, you know, they're, they're supposed to be these graceful and noble and elegant creatures and, you know, and it's always breaking one off and having to run to the bathroom. I, nice. I, I just I play a I play and it. And if that's my role play, that mm -hmm. that that side that it, it doesn't really matter if they're a monk or a or magic user because they're really more concerned about where's the bathroom. Yeah. Um, and and then uh, and then with with air call, it was uh, a thing of that you know you have you know a kid that um, you know a, a human, and and I wanted him to be just a real plain Jane vanilla you know person with with a with a minor you know physical flaw with a hair lift that caused him to have a lisp that you know caused him to be picked on his whole life and so how would he then combat that well he's going to join and he's going to be one of the rough toughest fighters he can be he's going to be a paladin right he's going to find something he's going to find a cause and dedicate himself to that cause right uh, and then I had a monk um, called uh, Balin Long and Thin for a while. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You have and the weirdest but interesting concept. So, so man. he was like, you know, this monk, this super religious monk, and he he, he would he would wear tights, and he was long but very thin, <laughs> and, and you know, so, and completely unaware that he was being overtly sexual all the you know all the time. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> Wait, which one was the ch- which one was the chicken? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That, that was that Blanks. Was... <laughs> what was the character? He was what a was gangster. The... Guido. Yes. Guido. 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 Oh, Guido the killer pig. Yes. Uh, I believe but that was, and that was a concept <laughs> that came out of the one, the idea for the one shot. I right. did that not was the... see that episode, but oh my God, it's notorious. It's notorious because my girlfriend told me about it. She's like, "You've got to, you've got to, you've got to listen to oh, that." You that do. Tell me the truth. <laughs> I'm that episode last is... week. I know. We don't. We no. don't freaking hammer you enough about that anymore. Man. I know. I know. I know. Y'all don't. Y'all don't. So, so the thing is, is that the uh, the uh, the uh, pros and cons I like to build into the to, to the player, um, and and I do start with class. Um, sorry, and I do start with race because that I think informs their backstory. That then informs what they're going to do to kind of either make up for or amplify their, uh, their, their, their attributes. Either they're oblivious of their flaws or they've overcome their flaws, you know, one of the two. And, and so they're either heroic or naive. And I think that most D&D players are like that anyway. So that, that, that's, that's kind of where I leave it at that. I just, I just make sure that when I'm DMing that I leave everything up to the players. They can run whatever type of player that they want, whatever type of class. I don't have any restrictions on that. Um, and then, uh, and then when, I, when I make them, um, I like to make them interesting uh, by poking a little bit of fun at, uh, poking a little bit of fun at convention. <laughs> nice. Uh, one of the caveats, we can talk about that, that we go into character creation is, um, one of the things that I find that I've run into, and we were talking about this, like player flaws and picking classes and things like that. One of the things that that I did, like I started playing uh, in my friend's campaign, uh, and it's it's a long term campaign and it's going, but the first iteration of my character, it's just like, yeah. I'm, He's going to be this bard and he's got, you know, he's also going to have, you know, a little bit of warlock and all that. And yeah. I ended up creating a character that was completely ineffectual mechanically. You know, mm-hmm. it just, it just did not go well. Uh, I was an inexperienced player trying to min max, you know, and did a terrible job of it. So um, what would you say, uh, like Scott, what is a good way to, what would you recommend to avoid caveats like that? Stick to a basic core class in race or, you know, you know especially I, for I, a newbie. So, so I'm going to give a bit of an answer and then I'm going to have Kyle come up with a better answer because I remember something that Kyle did with one of my characters when we were doing, uh, when I ran one, when I ran a one shot uh, in the, um, um, one of the things we did for, we had some pre-gens we were going to do into this. Um, we were trying to test the, uh, the uh, games I was going to be running for, um, for, for Gary Con, And I had this one E version of like a fighter, magic user, thief, right? And it was a way that one E would try to do this combination, multi-class, multi-character, this, all these different things. I can do a little bit of everything, jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. And I remember Kyle took a look at him and said, you need to make this guy a Valor Bard. You know, and so understanding mechanics and understanding how that works is 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 important. But but I didn't see it because I don't have the the experience of of a five E player. Um, the, the the mechanics that people used, I was always on the other side of the screen. So mm-hmm. why don't we have Kyle answer that question about min maxing a little bit better? Because he was able to take the the concept of of a jack of all trades character and understand how to translate the mechanics of that to a five E character. Kyle, so uh, I think that was a great question, and I want I'm going to have to hand in my chip. I uh, I didn't catch the question. Oh, you <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> I lost the question. Well, because the... we're we're also reading, we're being distracted. Yeah, by that's it. Y'all are really paying that's, attention to that's the not show. What it is. Because um... <laughs> <laughs> it's that DJ's talking on it, and he's putting a crap ton of concepts on here uh, for DJ, characters. 
Just no, it, out it's of your room. the the uh, the, question, the question is about. I'll let him come about, in. The question was about min maxing, right? Yes. The, the question was about how do you handle min maxing between when they, when you try and you have a character that you think you're going to take it this way, and then so you try to min max, but then the mechanics don't work out. So <laughs> so how do you combat that or how do you look for that when you're doing character creation that you don't min-max yourself into something that doesn't even work? How do you make sure you don't min-max yourself into something that doesn't work? Right. Um, Mechanically in, 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 in 5e, what are some of the pitfalls? You know, you, 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 you see a cool mechanic. Oh, I'd like to be a uh, um, I, I'd, I'd like to have a polearm and then, or glaive and do sentinel and polearm master, right? And then, and then mess it up somehow to where, you know, to, to where that doesn't work out the way it's supposed to be. And you end up having a very ineffectual character. Uh, the same exact way that we worked on Hockerbrecht, which was we talked to the DM. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and that can honestly be the simplest answer <laughs> there is I saw in Hockerbreck's case, I saw what um, um, Scott was trying to do and, you know, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. We were able to do that. And I just talked to him. I said, you know, you're borrowing a bit too much from every class. We're not making absurd uh, uh, right. where he's a multi-class of every single uh, 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 class available. Um, we're trying to make someone who fits in with this group, but also portrays everything very well. And so sometimes when you work yourself into a hole, um, maybe it's the fact that your DM um, doesn't use a map or anything. It's all theater of the mind. So a sentinel kind of goes out the window because you're not sure how that works and the DM has a different view on that. And so maybe, you know, your character concept, though really cool if you had in the map, just doesn't work in that scenario. And at that point, you just have to say, hey, you know, I wasn't really expecting this or that it wouldn't be as useful. And you either talk and you get that mechanic to be used more often in that situation, or you say, Maybe instead, let's go great weapon master. That way I actually know someone is in my face and I can hit them and I do get to be amazing on the battlefield. Right. Um, right. Not that's that. how it is mechanically. Um, mm -hmm. The other way is to um, work it out role-playing wise um, mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. find yourself, oh yeah, I'm this badass fighter and that's all I do. And then you find yourself in... 75% of a social situations, which mm -hmm. uh, an entire political game campaign. And, you know, the party is happy to have you there when that fight breaks out between the bodyguards who are hill giants, but mm -hmm. every other minute. And that's where you just say, hey, you know what? I've made a physical character and he's an empty shell right now and we need to fill him in. And that's, if you've made a purely physical character, awesome. You get to fill it in. And you get to decide, and you get to talk about that, and you get to, again, talk to your DM or talk to the other players and just be like, yeah, no, um, he's actually really embarrassed when he's in a social situation. And all that dexterity and finesse that you see on the battlefield entirely go away and he trips over the banquet tablecloth mm -hmm. and lands face first in the queen's chest. Ah. Uh, and... <laughs> so um, I, I, I have a quick follow up with that, um, um, David, because I want to ask Carol a quick question. Cause yeah. He's just, that... you know, tapping away. Yeah. Uh, so... I, I'm trying to copy all DJ's character concepts to put on discord. So, Gosh. so the, uh, the, uh, the Good. question was about, you know, min maxing and such as that. So I have a question, um, that you had talked about when you were talking about the construction of, uh, of a Terran, that two yeah. things I remember, I, I, I noticed that she was a very well-rounded character in development, but she also role-played as, you know, she wanted to do 
maybe not the right thing, but at least a cogent thing. And so she was heroic in her in her aspirations, if not always in her deeds. Um, but you wanted to put things into certain skills. And so my question is, is that when you're thinking about min-maxing and doing it correctly or not doing it correctly, do you pay more attention to, to, um, do, you pay, do you pay more attention to the skills, proficiencies, and, and, the, and the build out of the character from that standpoint? Or, or are you very much into that? No, I need two points in charisma. I need this feat. Uh, I mean, how, how do you do min-maxing? Is what is is the question? I don't think I really do. I mean, obviously, okay. no, obviously that's fair. That's I fair. mean, I mean, truth be told, obviously there are certain, you know, there are certain considerations that you know you want to. I min max to a degree only. The degree is really just what's the prime stat I need for that class, and I will, uh, you know, I'll fight or I'll either I'll do. Well, I usually do strength. So I know you can do strength the decks. Um, so like, yeah, if I had, I had a champion fighter to, you know, two handed weapon master, I put it in strength, you know, Taryn being a social character, a talky character, I want a charisma. So, and then I'll through like the second, like the second highest skill, or uh, sorry, uh, attribute or whatever <laughs> ability score, uh, I will consider what other, like what skills I want to do too. I'll, I'll consider that. You know, um, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll put points into that or, or if I feel like I need to be dodgy or whatever. Um, I said, I, I really try to build my character. I usually try to think about what I want to be as that character. And then I try to build the skills around it and okay. put points into what seems appropriate for that character. Uh, more, it's, I said, it's not so much min maxing. I said, the one thing I really do said is for the, for the class itself. But otherwise, it's really about that character, you know, and that character thinking that character's strengths and weaknesses. You see, what, what, so. what you described there was actually <coughs> was actually a methodology and approach to character creation that takes your prime attribute, your number one attribute, mm. bait that's class based. Yeah. OK. And your secondary attribute, your second highest one is role play based. Yeah, that's pretty. You know yeah, that's that's and that's yeah, that's pretty much how I do it. That, and that's no. that's what I'm saying. That is a system that will prevent you, hopefully, from when you're trying to set up your character by by making those mistakes, by putting extra attribute points in charisma or something like that because you want to have this one spell go off correctly or this one thing go off correctly and not understanding that you're only going to use that maybe like one time every Yeah, no, I, I try and to instead think of, of putting them in something yeah. like, you know, you know, intimidation, deception, performance, things that you're going to use every single time, right? Because you're trying to pull off a mechanic or you're trying to enable something to be real badass when you use it once every quarter. Yeah, no, I I right. never I never build a character for a single ability. Never, okay. never. Okay. It's it's going to be something, unless it's something I'm going to consistently use all the time. Tradition. Like, <laughs> like they got you know, like strength for you know like but that's if basically fighters are somewhat one trick ponies and you don't right. have a lot other than to hit so but the, the, in that respect yes i'm putting you know it into strength so i can hit real well and right. that's, that's one thing but that's but base. that's right. my primary thing i'm gonna do every single combat is go up and hit things so you know in that respect yeah i'll put I'll consider that that's important for that one skill, but that one skill is basically what I do every single time. Okay. I'm not going to spells or, you know, spells and, and all the other things are a little more tricksy because yeah, I mean, they, a lot of things are very situational in this game, especially when it comes to spells and such. So, you know, I try never to, to put myself in that. I have this one spell I'm going to use because the situation may never arise that it'll, that it'll ever, you know, up. they'll come up. Okay. So I've, I'm sorry. I've, I've so I, much I, 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 I kind of ran with that little thing from David a little bit too long. I apologize. Re, by that. the way, by the way, retraining. You could hear his own voice. And by the way, one, one other thing. Uh, I, I definitely did some spell swapping with Taryn. Because you could swap out a spell every time you level up. Spell. 
spell. Yeah, and I definitely did that because there were one, there's spells I took that I thought were going to be really useful and I never used them. Mm. So that I swap them out for something else that I, you know, I knew I could, I, I would get big use from. You know, it was, it was great leveling up right before the final fight, Bolton, too, and, and knowing that I was going to go in and try to uh, find that last piece. So I, that's why, I, like, all right, I switched one for knock. I said I realized about the 300 foot flipping boom. Yeah. <laughs> Why did they fucking put that in the game? This is a problem That's being an old time player, game, man. Carol. Not not that loud, I don't think. I know it's been a thing, but not for 300 feet. Um, but I mean, also though, I knew I probably need it because I don't pick locks, even though Frank was making them perform checks for some weird reason. <laughs> they're not, they're tool checks. And which is like, so I knew I was going to need it regardless of the sound effect uh gotcha. you know so and then i forget what else i know i was gonna i was tempted to take um uh locate creature because that's it, that i was gonna i was thinking about using that to try to find uh ao but i was like oh, i can't do spell components and everybody else like, yeah i'm a bride i don't need it yeah screw it I'll, we'll find him anyways we'll have the rod and that'll lead us right to him i'm like i don't need it so gotcha. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Well, David, did uh, you have any other points that you wanted to talk about? All right, let's see. Um, the, the only other thing that we can probably close it out with is, okay, uh, restrictions with uh, creating characters. When DMs impose restrictions like we're going to have in the next campaign. Not necessarily. Oh, oh it's kind of leaning that way. Two campaigns that have restrictions. Yes. None of them are. Yeah, we still have too to choose. Serious, but yeah, you still have to choose. But uh, uh, when you when your DM gives restrictions, do you think it's fair, or or how do you handle it? I mean, does it a? Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, it's going to affect some of your choices. But I don't know. Uh, what are your your feelings on that yeah because as long as it's supported inside the mythos and the uh and the lore of the of the um of the campaign system that's fine okay. i mean if, if for instance if, you, if you're playing in a futuristic world um that only has three races then you only have three races you know that's it you know right. if, if if you're playing in a more traditional D D type setting um and you tell your characters, you tell your players, okay, we're not going to do any of these and any of these. And, you know, no, I, I hear a lot, you know, no, no tieflings, no, uh, no, um, um, you know, dragonborn and no Asimar or no, I mean, or, and no Eric Kokra. If it's just because your DM's lazy, I'm, I'm not a fan. Right. right. I, I, or, <laughs> or change things. Right. Um, it, but, but if it's because, you know, this is the can this is the campaign world is that you know demons and devils simply cannot fornicate with you know can't mate with humans so right. thus there are no cambians and there are no tieflings period you right. know then then you know so be it right if it's supported by lore i understand it needs to be backstored but that's speaking as a dm that's that's where i see it. but if it's just because your dm don't want to look up on player <laughs> sandbook yeah <laughs> Frank's like lore. <laughs> yeah, now that is, that yeah is my I know opinion. why. That's no, my opinion. Lore or love? I this know why Frank lore. is. Okay. We all know why Frank is banning changelings, right? No, I don't. It's Could it because be? I've played the greatest changeling ever. It's uh, actually David. I'm Walt. pretty sure <laughs> it's actually. I'm sure he got annoyed with uh, Blake's changeling. Oh, I think on. he's uh, he's annoyed he with my until David made his. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says Kyle's and David's <laughs> and well, every fair, single one. And every single one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I've honestly, never. I don't even know what this in real quick. Is. I don't even know what a changeling is. So I've never. It's a game a breaker. Doppelganger. Yeah, it's a game breaker. Oh. Those aren't player those race aren't, doppelganger. No, those aren't players. That's not. Those aren't PCs. Oh, oh they are. are. They are changelings are. Are, are playable so <laughs> i would say with restrictions the more there are the more you get to dig in and find something really awesome to play um as honestly what it is i mean if you look at it as bonds or chains to weigh you down 
then you'll be weighed down. It's really a mindset that you have to switch over and say, okay, this is what I have. I could whine to the DM and be like, but I want to play a tiefling changeling. And you'll be that player. And no one likes that player. <laughs> right. Okay. <Right. Yeah. laughs> or unless your DM is really cool and lets you play as a dog. I mean, that would be the coolest DM I've that ever would. played with, honestly. <laughs> a dog. <laughs> a dog. Yeah. You yeah, missed the one shot. Ernie played okay. a dog. He was like, hey, uh, weird question. Can I play a dog? Warlock? <laughs> All right, this is how it's going to go. But You can play a dog with these conditions. <laughs> dog warlock. <laughs> it was yeah. Eldritch, yeah, Eldritch Bark. There you go. <laughs> Uh, but with restrictions, that was you get awesome. to really dig in and find something awesome. And or mm-hmm. maybe you look at a different class that maybe is homebrew. But that's a topic, honestly, for a different. That's time. another. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. Right. Um, <laughs> who will be on the show for that topic? Oh, what yeah. topic is this again? Oh, DJ's right right making homebrew. a new topic for the same uh, thing: character creation. Oh, he's just going to come up with the concepts, though, with the stories. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to copy them all down right now. There's a, there's, he has a lot of them. Yeah, and you I, know. Uh, know although, steps, you DJ, dear, I told Shut up, Carol! Stuff. Let's got talk! Go, go, go. Now, if, if you want to check out those concepts, please uh, feel free to check us out on the Discord, as well I'll as all the other things. Own. Or, yes, or please come up here and please join the conversation on Discord. We do have a on Discord. dot blah 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 whatever the hell I don't I don't know anything yeah don't be shy come talk yeah Yeah, we'll we'll continue this conversation on Discord so yeah absolutely and then we'll put you on the next show on it tinyurl.com slash imhobo inc discord thank you and uh, with that you know a a good host Scott usually Uh then talks about all those things they talked at the beginning of the show like uh, so they have like a summary like a wrap-up a summary like you say like um follow uh, us on twitch you know you can take a look at our archive there or at YouTube. I, I was like i'm gonna take some notes here follow take some us notes. all right that's great great uh, don't forget to drink while you're doing that uh uh right. you know if you want to uh uh continue talking about it you know th- follow us on twitch too. what else uh-huh. what uh, do uh, i say after that i might say you know talk to us on twitter too that's a good place and you know if you want on twitter yeah, Twitter, Twitter, yeah, yeah. T W I T W E E T I R. T W. Actually, I think they got rid of the vowels. It's one of those things. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. But in if you wanted to join in on say the one shot for the Beholder Swamp, you could get us on Twitter or at mhobo inc at gmail dot com or again Discord. And then we probably thank our wonderful sponsors. Um, I'm not going to go through that rigmarole again. <laughs> uh, pirate dog dice for when you roll like shit. Pirate dog dice, you will roll shit with their there you go. dog shit dice. Uh, and All right. of course, Oddfish. Oddfish Games with their Adventure Oddfish Sense. Games. Adventure Sense. Don't do it. Ancient Library. Ooh. And you, you didn't mix what? that one up. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> You can get their Shine Project, and even your books may be in an ancient library smelling up the place. They certainly won't be in the putrid sewers where they are now, and I'm not picking that one up. Um, (laughs) And then, then, Scott, I might say, all right, guys, wave, because you've had your final thoughts. Let's uh, let's say goodnight. Did we have final thoughts? Good night, everybody.